YouTube. Hickory Stick back with you again. Today we're going to be doing some fishing reel maintenance. I'm going to show you how to take apart a Shimano Curado 70 MGLK. That's a lot to spit out there, but that is actually the model number of this reel. This is a fantastic reel. I love this reel. It has been flawless. It is smooth, and I'm going to be honest with y'all. I own three of these. I own two 2020 Bantams, I own a 2022 Metanium, and I own a 2023 Metanium. And these 70s cast further than the Metaniums or the Bantams. These 70s are an absolutely fantastic reel. They're in the $230 to $250 price range. I catch smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, I catch them all with this reel. It has never had a problem as far as drag capability goes. Now I do have an aftermarket handle on it. This is my dedicated crankbait rod reel. Yeah, I I use it for crankbaits. I know everybody normally says need to use like a 200 or a, at least a 150 for crankbaits, but I throw primarily balsa crankbaits. And since I do that, I need a reel that will cast a light bait better, and this one just does it. I had a Bantam on my crankbait rod, took it off and put this 70 on there. I like the 70 a lot better. But because it's my dedicated crankbait rod, I have an aftermarket Gomexis handle on it. This is a, I think it's a 120 millimeter handle, or it may be a 100 millimeter, I don't remember. But just a bigger handle and just more comfortable for cranking to to me so that's going to be the only difference between this reel and a stock 70 when we go to taking it apart is the gomexis has a castle nut that has a their own proprietary sized torx head wrench otherwise you would normally use a 10 millimeter wrench to take your nut off to get your handle off that's the only difference. Everything else on this is going to be a standard reel disassembly. Now, what you're going to need to take this thing apart, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and a Torx bit. I'm going to be cleaning all of the old oil and grease off of it because I am changing greases. I am going to the to Duthlon grease. I've already done one reel with this grease. I really like it so far. But the thing about it is, they say, Duthlon says that their stuff is not compatible with any other reel grease or oil. So make sure you clean all of your old oil and grease off your reel. Now, they've got four different types of lubricants that we're going to put on this reel. And they normally, they come in these little cans like this. And then this is your bearing oil. I spooned them out into some syringes just to make application easier than from the little container like this. But there's a gear grease. This is a ceramic gear grease. They, all these are synthetics, but this is a synthetic ceramic gear grease. You've got a drag grease for carbon, for drag systems. And you have a semi-fluid grease. This is for... Your plastic gears, your level wine, your level wine bearings, everywhere that's not constant rotation and high speed rotation. And then you've got your ceramic and high speed bearing oil that we will put on the spool bearings. So different lubricants, a little bit more involved with the lubrication because we're putting on different lubricants. But so far, I really like the Duthlon stuff. It's about 40 bucks for this kit of lubricants. Beyond that, you're going to need a pick. And if you are like me, you will need a special tool for your handle. Otherwise, you will need a 10 millimeter wrench to take off your handle nut. And you're also going to need a pair of small needle nose. All right, let's get started here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the spool out. Now, I'm not changing line. I have recently spooled this up with new line so i'm not putting new line on it so we're just going to flip it open pull the palm and side plate off 
And I'm going to work my line spool out, which can sometimes be a pain in the butt with the line on it. And we're going to set the spool to the side because Shimano's reels have the infinity braking system on it. The infinity braking system does not use any kind of grease or oil or anything like that. So there's nothing really to do to this other than to make sure it's clean and as you can see this is really clean anyway the next thing we will do is we're going to disassemble the palming side plate while we've got it here i'm going to pop the bearing out first you're going to take and there's your bearing keeper on the inside right down in here now i'm going to take it out i'm going to use my pick and i'm going to work that bearing keeper out and when you get it out, that's what it'll look like. It's just a little clip. All right, we're gonna put that to the side. Now we're gonna take off our brake. We've got three screws that hold the brake in. Now be careful when you take this brake out. And the reason why I say that, let's flop, flip our screws off. You're gonna have a plastic spacer underneath here that right there clear plastic spacer and you can have up to three of these per the schematic there may be up to three of these spacers in your reel because they fine-tune the brake with these spacers so be careful not to lose that what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wheel off for the infinity brake. Take your braking, your infinity brake, and set it to zero or one before you take it out. Do yourself a favor. Now that's all that's in the side plate. So we're gonna use a T10. We're gonna take this loose. You don't have to pull this gear off if you do not want to. I'm taking it loose for the sake of being thorough. There is a washer in it. There's actually two washers in it. There's a little rubber washer. Well, I say it's rubber. It's a metal washer with a rubber backing. And then that's just a gear. Now your other piece is your infinity spool. Your infinity spool, your bearing is still down in there. We're gonna pop our bearing out. This is your palming side spool bearing. And down in there you have your tension washer which should be i think this is carbon now that's as far as i'm going to take this down this comes off but you have to have a special press tool to take it off with i don't have that tool we'll bring our attention back to the reel we're going to take our handle off in this case it's just pulling it off and unscrewing it now when you pull the handle off your drag star should just come off and there's a spring underneath it. And in your drag star is your clicker. Now I'm gonna take that apart. There's a keeper pin in there. Be careful though, see that fell out? Inside your drag is your little keeper. I mean, your little clicker. It's gonna fall out and there's a little baby spring in there with it. Do not lose your little spring or your keeper. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our drag nut off. You've got drag nut, copper washer, two identical concave washers, and then a brass thrust washer. Now we can take our tension knob off. Inside your tension knob is another tension washer. Now you've got, you've got an O-ring. That's your O-ring seal. I'm taking the O-ring off because I'm gonna clean this stuff with Gojo to get all the grease off. And I don't want to run the risk of damaging the O-ring with the Gojo. If you're not gonna use something, if you're not changing types of grease like I am, and you're just gonna put it back with, the, with factory grease, then you don't have to take that O-ring off. Just be careful and don't damage your O-ring. Now inside of this cap is a rubber washer. It's down in the center. Now we've got your other spool bearing. 
and you've got a keeper clip for that spool bearing. And let's see if he'll fall out on his own. Nope. He doesn't want to come out, so I'm just going to hook him gently with my pick. And pry him just a little bit. I don't want to damage him. There's a the spool bearing. Now down in here, there is a plastic... Well, actually, I think it may be phenolic of some sort or resin spacer. There are two bearings in here. You've got your spool bearing, and then you've got the white spacer, and then there is a bearing down in here for your pinion. You're not going to be able to get that pinion bearing out until we take the side plate off. I pulled the other, I pulled the spool bearing and the spacer out at this time simply because it's just easier to get them out with the side plate on to me. You don't really have to do it in that order if you don't want to. Next thing we're going to do is pull the side plate off. We're going to start, there's a screw on the back side of the side plate, right on the back side of the frame, I mean, right here. This is a different screw. This is a plastic threaded type screw. Then there are three screws on this side of your side plate. This screw and this screw are short. See their length. This third screw, this top center screw is longer. Now this is under spring pressure. So don't be alarmed if it moves when you get that last screw loose. Sometimes that third screw don't want to come out. There it comes. And notice, see how it is longer than the other two. That's your top center screw. Now we're going to pull the side plate off. Sometimes these can get hung on your pinion or your handle shaft. Right here, your main gear shaft. There it comes. A little pressure and it came off. We're going to finish disassembling the side plate first. Two, three things to come out of this side plate. There is your bearing for your pinion. There is your bearing for your shaft or for your main drive shaft. And then there is your anti-reverse bearing. All three of these need to come out. This bearing for your pinion, it comes out this way. This bearing right here comes out this way. Your anti-reverse bearing comes out this way. The easiest way to get this little pinion bearing out right here is to take a screwdriver that is bigger than the hole and push it out. If you don't have a screwdriver that's bigger than the hole, this bearing should not be stuck in there hard. This bearing should just be sitting in there. It should not be under a lot of tension and it should just pop out. This anti-reverse bearing can be a pain to get out. They can be stuck in there. I'm going to use this screwdriver that has this blunt edge. And I'm going to try to just gently push it. Put a little pressure on each side. Kind of evenly applying. And it comes out. Notice it is flat on one side chamfered on the other the chamfered side goes in like this so this bearing sits in here like this now we've got your frame i suggest to you the first thing you do is you take these two springs for your clutch off next up you've got your bushing for your drag engagement that's also the bushing that rides inside the anti-reverse gear. Now you can slide off your main gear inside of your main gear. If you flip it over, you're going to have this washer and it's concave. Concave side sits up. So it sits like that in there. Then you've got a drag washer. This is a carbon drag washer. You need to clean this drag washer. If you're replacing the grease, if you're switching to this Duth line grease like I am, this drag washer needs to be cleaned. But be careful with your drag washer because your drag washer is somewhat delicate. You can snap it. And then you're in for a bad day if you want to put your reel back together and get back on the water. 
Next up, you've got two things here. You've got your clutch disengagement gear and you've got your lower drag washer. This washer is also carbon, also needs to be cleaned. Now, with all that taken apart, I would suggest you, need, you take off this little plastic shield because it's now loose due to you taking loose that third, top third longer screw out of your side plate. So you come over to this side and there's one screw holding it on from this side and that's this screw right here. And now this should slide forward and slide off. Be careful with this. This is a delicate piece. You can snap this really easily. Next up, let's work on this side still. Let's take out our pinion and our pinion. I'm going to call it the throwout bearing. I don't know what the actual name of it is. Now we can disassemble our clutch. Now you've got two options here actually. You can either take your main drive shaft off or you can disassemble your clutch, one of the two. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disassemble the clutch. The first thing that comes out is you've got two, these two little screws with small heads. They hold your clutch shafts on. Now we're gonna pick up our clutch itself. This particular reel only has one clutch spring and that's right here. So I'm gonna pop it up and it's under a lot of tension. You see, when I did it, it all popped loose, right? Now I'm gonna show you this all was just, was sitting down here like this. Okay, you've got your clutch, you've got your disengagement dog or paw, whatever you wanna call it. You got your little clutch spring. Now you've got your clutch engagement lever. To get it loose, you gotta take a screw off the front up here, but we're gonna pull this off first. So you've got these two black screws. Pop him off. We're gonna set him down for now. We'll work on him in a minute. Now we're gonna take loose our clutch engagement lever. Now to get to that, you've got a screw right here. I find it best to put it in the disengaged position, come underneath your level wind. And I'm gonna spin the level wind over to the side like that. Come under your level wind and you can get on that screw. Small, big head, plastic coarse thread screw. This is the only screw that looks like this in the entire fishing reel. Okay, now the way you get this loose, there's two locating dowels on it and you gotta get it loose from the two dowels and lift it out at the same time. So you kinda gotta pick the back end up and tilt it and it'll lift out. Then this thing lifts out if you slide him all the way to the top and tilt him back like that, he'll come out. Next up, we're gonna take, this is just a friction plate is all it is. We're gonna take him loose by pushing right there in those two holes. Now we've got our clutch, our clutch plate. We're gonna remove our two screws from our clutch plate. This will just lift out of it. This is plastic. Be careful with it. Now there's a bearing in here. This is your bearing. I'm gonna take the screwdriver and see if I can't push on it a little bit. There it comes. Okay, the last thing we gotta take loose on the, on the frame of the reel is the level wind. The level wind goes together like pretty well any standard level wind. Now to take it out though, you need to take off your switch for your lock on your palming side plate. Underneath there is a spring and a detent ball. So be careful, hold pressure on it when you take this screw loose. Now 
there's the little spring in the detent ball right there. Let's try to dump them out. Now, to get the level wind apart, there is an E-clip right there that you have to pull off. That E-clip, it can, it can run away from you. It's not hard. Next up, which we should have done this first, I apologize, this is kind of out of order, but take your pawl cover off. You got a, a little metal spacer and then your pawl will be in there. Next up, you have got a, probably two brass washers or copper, I'm sorry. And there's mine. You got two copper washers. Now, your level wind sh should slide out. And your level wind shaft should slide out of your level wind housing. Now your level wind gear can drop down exposing a pin that should push out with no more than finger pressure. And your level wind gear should come off. Then you've got a plastic bushing. Now this is an upgrade that you can do. This, is, this right here is an upgrade. And for the money that this reel cost, I don't know why it wasn't in there from the factory. You can change this bushing out to a bearing. I happen to have a bearing here, the correct size. So we're gonna change this out for a bearing when we put this reel back together because I've got this bearing on hand. Last thing is your guide shaft for your level line. It just pulls out. Now your frame of your reel is completely empty. The last thing to do now is to take apart our main drive shaft. We have an E-clip holding everything on, and then we have a stack up of parts. So I'm gonna pull the E-clip off first. There it came. This is a bigger E-clip. It's different size from the level wind E-clip, so it's easy to tell them apart. Now you should have a washer and your bearing. Then you've got your plate. Now you've got your gear. Notice this gear has diamond shaped in it. There's two detent balls and a spring inside this gear. This is so your level, this is a protection measure so you don't break your gear on your level wind. So you gotta pull this thing off carefully. Now we're gonna push these through. And that's it. I'm gonna run my bearings through a acetone wash followed by an IPA wash in an ultrasonic cleaner. But this stuff right here, I'm gonna clean these up with a toothbrush and some Gojo. This other stuff, I am merely going to wipe it down because number one, it's too small to be trying to clean and run through with a toothbrush and things of that nature. Number two, it doesn't really need to be that thoroughly clean. And we'll be back to reassemble.